Ding. Right. Okay. So this is lesson number seven of ten. And we've been looking at the atmospheric perspective during the, the last seven weeks. Um, we've also been looking at linear perspective. But um, last week we were working from uh, by looking at some other artists' work. Um, so we're going to obviously continue with a little bit of that today. Um, and we're using acrylic paints. And I showed you a little bit about um, how to blend the paint. Uh, and you would have seen me working on doing a copy of an artist's work where people are rushing through a city centre, um, either in the morning or in the uh, late evening. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. I'm going to start a new, another picture today because um, what I'd like us to try next is to take some of the techniques and ideas that we've learned from looking at these different artists uh, and then apply those to a drawing that we do of a photograph. So I've already started my drawing of a photograph today. And I'll show you that in a few minutes. And then once I, I'm doing that in Byra actually, but I'm going to work back over the top. Um, with uh, acrylic paints uh, and try and take some of the ideas out of the painting that I did last week as well. Um, what I've also got uh, with me today um, to show you on screen here is a few of the worksheets that I've done previously or examples or paintings that I've done previously with you in class just to remind you of some of the different things that we do we can do with acrylic paints when we're working. So um, I'm going to take you straight over to the old wall over here. Here we go. So um, this was my version just here wobbling about over there. Now that was what I worked on um, last lesson whilst we were doing the lesson uh, while we were all uh, painting away there. Um, and the nice thing about this was the, um, as you can see in the original over there, is the blues and things and the less distinctive marks um, towards the background, which gives it a sense of distance and space. And then the um, heavier marks in the foreground, or the, the brighter, more vivid colours and clearer shapes in the foreground, which brings those figures um, out and draws our attention before we see obviously the background of where everything is. So um, I'm going to be moving forward uh, today and looking at some, uh, some uh, uh, another picture, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, you, you may have noticed I put a load of uh, new pictures on the um, on the drive today. Um, so if you haven't seen those, I'll show you what they are. But um, pretty much they are um, similar pictures as before. But uh, this time you've got a little bit more choice. And I've, I've put some different things in there as well. So I'll put some, some um, more close up people sort of pictures in there as well so you may remember this if you were with with the classes a few years ago um, this was where we we drew from um, some live footage or well not live footage but some footage of people walking across a zebra crossing in somewhere like Japan or China or somewhere a really busy crossing and you had to draw people really quickly um, I thought I'd show you this because it reminds me a little bit of uh, all the mark making we've been doing with people recently. Um, so we've kind of covered that ground, but in a slightly different way during this project. So these were done like in time sessions and we overlaid them on top of each other and then I, we, I got you to work back into them. So I just thought I'd show you that um, because well, that was quite interesting, that one. Um, and the next one is one that I did years ago. I'm showing you these because um, it's quite interesting to see what different sorts of things you can do with the paint. So these, this was actually watercolour and we're not using watercolour but um, on this picture I, I took inspiration from the artist you can see up there on the top um, left hand corner and um, I used, I did a, an outline drawing in pen or pencil, I can't remember which way around I did it, and then I added the watercolour over the top. So you can use the paint, the acrylic paint, if you haven't got watercolours, you can use the acrylic paint, paint very thinly to create washes of colour over the top of a drawing so you can still see it coming through the side there. And then you can see all those scribbly marks and, and things that we've also we've recently been looking at as well. So there's one, uh, there's another one, sorry. And 
Um, but then we've got uh, this one that I've already got out up here. So this was a mixture of acrylic paints. Um, so you'll remember in doing a little bit of a blend last week, uh, blending a couple of colours into each other. This one, um, there is some blending going on with the acrylic paint. So adding perhaps a little bit of water and a couple of colours together helps um, the two colours to, to blend nicely. But here, what I've actually done as well is I've added colour pencil back over the top of the acrylic paint, which works really nicely. So if I get in really close to this, like that, you can see maybe this blue area particularly, we've got this um, pale sort of turquoise color underneath, and then the pencil has been blended back over the top of these shapes to create a much more deeper and richer color. You can also see here at the top corner where I've added uh, a little bit of yellow pencil crayon back over the top. So again, another technique that is a possibility for adding some of these lovely marks that we've been uh, talking about uh, when we did the charcoal and things like that as well. Uh, so let's get that one. And then we've got this one. This harks back to really to what we've already done, but I thought I'd show you this one as well. So. Um, again, you've got a bit of inspiration over there, and you've got a biro drawing mixed with watercolour and these scribbly marks again. So you can see how colour could be applied to some of your own black and white drawings uh, to create uh, something very different again. Okay, uh, I've got a couple more actually. I'm just going to show, I wanted to show you these because I thought they were pretty good. So this is actually um, the town hall over in Northampton. The guild hall i think they call it so um so you can see it over here it was all drawn out in pencil to get the outlines pretty much like we would normally do um and then we've got acrylic paint for the yellow area applied here and if i zoom in a bit closer you can see that i've done some different things on this one so we've got the the pen marks but we've also got you see in the middle there we've got like a bit of a map and at the top, we've got tissue paper, which has been, if you've got something like that, or even some, some soft paper, um, or even look, musical notes in the middle there, um, you can use those to cre start creating a little bit more um, texture in your work as well. So, you know, you apply the, um, you can apply it when you want, but um, in this case, I, I probably applied it um, as I went along. So just putting in some different collage materials um to create a little bit more texture and then work over the top with um the paint using the blending things that, as well that we were doing before um let's see what else i think i think i've got one more to show you <laughs> one more uh and then uh we'll go over to the uh to the desk right so this one i did and it's got a little bit of a highlight on the side there on the left hand side um, because it's pen and it's reflected but um, here again you can see there's lots of um, there's lots of lines over the top of this cottage um, but the colors have been applied um, through the lines in a similar way but slightly different and then i've um, used the acrylic paints and pencils and pens again to add all of the detail and there's a little bit of inspiration from over there, which I then extended with some of my own ideas. So there's pencil and acrylic paint in there too. So there's a few ideas for you. Um, if you want to see any of these again, then I'll um, come back to this, this um, to the wall and, and show you them if you want me to show you. Um, I've also put these on the drive, so you can access these and have another look in your own time if you want to. Right. OK, so we'll go over to the old wall then. Here we are. So here's my painting. Um, so I've talked about that already. I'm going to be um, moving on from this um, now, but I'm going to just do a few more things with the uh, acrylic paint um, before we crack on. Um, so earlier on, I was doing a few. Um, I did the blending last week. So I'm going to do that again just to remind you. 
Uh, and then I've got other things like glazes and using wax resist as well and scratching back through the paint as well. So you can add marks in while the paint's wet. Um, so I'm going to do that in a few seconds. Um, so let's actually I'll do it now. <coughs> so I've got some of the brushes. There's a palette knife here as well. And I'll put that over there. I've got a few colours here, so I'm going to do uh, a blend, just because um, I can. <laughs> I'm going to show you that. So I'll zoom in a little bit more so we can have a closer look at that again. There we go. So first of all, um, it's useful as well to have something to wipe your brushes on, because sometimes you end up with too much water on your paint, on your brush. So getting a little bit of the old green over here. So remember what I said last week is add a little bit of water to your paint, but don't overdo it because you, you're not using watercolors or you're not using it like watercolors at the moment. And then once you've done that, you get hold of a bit of the next color, mix it with the first color you've just used, put it next door, but not on top of straight away. And then work your way up and into the green so it blends nicely like that. And you might want to wash your brush again. You don't have to, but I've just done that. Um, and then a little bit more yellow, a bit further round. My palette's a bit got an old acrylic on it, so it's um, a little bit manky, but the colour's okay. So that we can then start to blend that yellow in like that. Okay, so um, the next one I'll show you why that's just drying, uh, and that's the blend, um, is the wax resist. So this is just a candle wax, a uh, wax candle, sorry. Um, so you can make marks with that you can water down your paint and you will need to water it down because you, what you'll find is that acrylic paint is really good you can it actually you can actually paint directly over the top of candle wax and it won't resist but i've just put some candle wax down on there so if you imagine you want to put more marks in then you will be able to do it using the candle like that and that will eventually if it doesn't do straight away it'll separate and the next thing you can do is this isn't quite dry but i'm going to do it anyway so the next one is if you want to change the overall feel of a color you can or you want to change the way it looks generally you can do what i call a little bit of a, a glaze over the top so this is watered down blue obviously uh, and then you can brush a very thin layer of color over the one you've just done and it'll make it go a little bit darker it's a little bit tricky to do it while it's still wet so i'm going to get this one so we'll do a quick glaze over this one just here let's try that so you get a bit of your blue and over the top of this one which is properly dry and it's got resist on it wax resist you can change the feel and the tone of that color underneath i'll do it over here as well there so that's a little bit of a glaze of color now um, I did do that last week on here. So if we look at this picture again, if you remember my, I, I was talking about this. This had some particularly bright colors, or not bright, but um, more vivid colors. So I applied a bit of like a, of a gray sort of glaze, bluey gray glaze over the top of, of this. 
and it toned it down but some of the colors that were underneath would then come through it and it kind of united that area but it also brought out some of the um it it, it brought out some of the it left some of the colors underneath through okay all right um now the other thing you can also do while your paint is wet is you can scratch back through so i'm going to do that now with a bit of red and this will work while it's wet but not while it's um when it's all dried up because it is pretty permanent when it's dried really so let me use this old bit of paint if I can so paint on the surface and and then draw into it and you can apply create the marks that we've been learning <laughs> through this project like that now if you wanted to do it when it's dry um, you can put your wax crayon down or your wax candle wax down paint over the top i'm going to mix red and green together here you can paint over the top of the candle wax but with thicker paint and then when that's um so you need to go over it if you want it nice and smooth because the wax underneath makes it slightly different to to um, paint more evenly and then when that's done um, you should be able to scrape back through it even though it's dry and that's because the slippery surface of the wax underneath allows you to do that like this all right so we've got glazes we've got wax um and scratching back and blending as well so we've got a whole range of things for you to try out the other one that i haven't done um yet and i'll do that in a few minutes while you're all starting off um is you can apply put tissue paper down on the surface of your work with glue pva glue and then you create a bit of texture but then you can paint on top of that as well so i will do that in a few minutes whilst you're all getting started okay now um the picture that i'm i'll take that away a second now the picture that i'm working on um because i i brought in i brought in uh, more people into the in or close-ups of people in a sense in, in different settings so um, we've still got some elements of perspective so one like this where we're looking from underneath upwards towards the buildings I think this is actually in the subway somewhere actually um, but we've got some nice composition and characters in here so there's one um, and there's absolutely loads of them that you can have a look at we've got this one with a lady with an umbrella in the rain so these quite nostalgic um, old-fashioned photos um we've got lots of reflections in this one here as well lady in the rain again i think they're really nice to look at and then other ones where people are indoors within in a city so again we've got atmospheric atmospheric perspective here because if you look behind the man you can see there's figures and things and they're all really um kind of faded and indistinct whereas the character in the foreground playing the piano or sitting at the piano at least um, is much more clear to look at okay so um, as far as drawing these out um, it's the same as before using a grid um, to, to draw them out so that you can then start to paint next week i will start working with a canvas so um, you'll be able to see me work in, in that way too um, if you haven't got a canvas we can carry on you can carry on with paper that's not a problem at all all right um now last of all before i actually stop talking is um i've started to draw out the picture that you can see over here so uh, i'm doing a very kind of scribbly quick drawing of this character standing um, suspiciously next to a wall outside in the rain with an umbrella so I'm going to be drawing that and then I'm going to have a look at some of the techniques that 
um, I was using last week, and maybe some of my own, and start to create a painting from this. So I'll just zoom out a little bit now, so you can see where, where I've got to do so far with it. All right, so um, so what we're doing then today is finishing off from last week, which I suppose some of you are already doing, um, or carrying on, and then I'd like to choose a new photograph to work from. There's plenty of them. There's a couple more here, look. Different ones, cafe ones. Um, choose a different photograph, um, grid it up and get it sketched out. And then we can start playing around and seeing what we can do with paint. Um, on this one, actually, what I thought I might do is use one or two particular colours, blues, whites and greys maybe, to do the, the most, the majority of it and then bring in a few accent colours into it to keep it kind of very moody. So blues and things like that to go with this kind of very melancholy sort of blue picture that um, picked up here. Um, just there. Okay, so that's what I'll be doing. I hope you're all um, occupied and happy and everything, but um, let me know. If you need any help, or if you want me to have a look at what you're doing, then I'll have a look and we'll crack on with it. <laughs> or I'll help you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, thanks very much, everyone. Let's get started. Right, so this um, this process of using the um, the biro to begin with works out quite nicely as the this picture um, progresses. So um, you can see that I've used the biro pen very heavily, but um, in a moment you'll see how I use uh, much more kind of different marks. And we've done a lot on mark making during this. Um, this project during this course, um, you'll see me adding more kind of scribbly marks and looser marks to create uh, the texture of the wall that the guy is just standing near in that corner there. So you can see me doing it here. I'm just kind of scribbling in some of the, the lines and in a minute, I think you'll be able to see a bit closer up um some of these bits so there's dots scribbles and lines um all the way through this which build up the atmosphere and the texture in the image as it progresses here and a bit later on you'll see um or you may see me working back into the uh, scribbles and things uh, over the top of the paint. So it can work both ways. Although I, I did notice one thing that uh, the pen when put on the top of the um, of the paint tends to be a little it, or it seemed a little bit more reflective, um, which is uh, another interesting aspect, I suppose. But um, it's worth noting that um, the ink in Biro Pen can be a little bit on the reflective side, which can make it harder to photograph. Um, if you wanted to photograph it, that is at the end. Uh, so there you can see I've, I've gradually faded out. I, I decided that I wasn't going to go right up to the edge of the picture and I was just going to, with time constraints, but also because it might be quite interesting just to focus on the area that I'm interested in, which is this chap um, sort of standing by the wall here. Um, so I'm you know, reasonably happy with, with that outline. Um, it illustrates the picture quite nicely. Um, I think some of the proportions are slightly um, askew, but um, for, the, for what we're looking for here, I'm not too worried about going back and correcting anything like that. So um, anyway, so here goes the, um, the wash, if you like, over the top of the picture. So already we've um, I've made the paints a little bit transparent and already we've started to get um, a little bit of atmosphere in here. Now I've used titanium white, um, so a nice strong little bit of paint in there. So automatically that blue background that I put in just a few minutes ago 
will now be able to um, be painted over with some of the highlights to bring out some of these lovely details or um, highlights in here against the shadows and against the mid-tone. So the blue in the background is actually a mid a mid tone um, for me to be able to see the dark bits and also just to then put in the highlights like I'm doing now. So um, this is where, you know, you can refine your drawing, uh, change it a little bit um, by painting over, around, as you can see, I just went around the face and automatically now we've got the, we've got the, the profile of the, the young lad and I've used the, the, um, the white paint to put the umbrella um, stick whatever you call it cane whatever you call it in there and I can use the the white again to add highlights on the umbrella handle and around the fingers as well so as you can see in the picture there the the boy is dark under the umbrella and the background is much lighter so this is what I'm putting in here to make things pop out a little bit more and in a short while I start to bring in some colors we had a discussion about color and how you can change the mood of what might be a really sad picture into something that has maybe a more contemporary feel or has a completely opposite effect to what you might expect so I'm going to put in in a little while some yellows and purples in here so it'll be very kind of a snappy looking picture um, so while I'm putting these I'm putting these whites in here and I talked about glazes a little while ago so the gla the, the white ends up being almost like um, just lightening up that area we still got some of the or these areas but all, we've still got some of the blue poking back through um, here but once I put the yellows in we should start to see how it changes the mood a little bit of the picture so some of the shadows now I've apply I'm applying uh, some of the purple in these areas so I'm changing those dark pen marks if you like into something different again and here we go with the yellow so the yellow against the purple are going to be opposites so they're going to really make the picture pop snap out of the out of the blue there I'm going back refining different parts of the picture as I go but now it's really emphasized that silhouette which is what I was really focusing on um, for this evening's bit picture and then above it look I'm adding some pinks so I'm kind of adding a much more happier feel to this very rainy uh, somber looking image I'm changing it with the colors which is which is really good fun see what happens see what you can come up with by altering the color in the picture So to finish up, I'm just um, adding in a few more highlights into the image. Um, what I do actually with this picture in, in a few moments is I actually start using a palette knife on here. And this is because, interestingly, that I was running out of time, but I, I thought, well, I can cover a bit of ground if I use a bigger brush, scratch the paint with the back of my brush, but then in a few moments, I do use a palette knife. There you go. So I'm applying this because I'm getting some really interesting and different marks and creating even more texture and atmosphere within the image. So I hope you enjoyed this evening and um, we'll be back next week and looking at painting with canvas, which will be good fun. So thanks very much, everybody.